Hello, all you beautiful, wonderful people out there. Welcome back to Beyond the Block, the tutorial-based Let's Play series where I show you all the fundamentals of Minecraft while we also build automated sugarcane farms. That's right, folks. Today, we're going to finally get into some redstone contraptions, and we are going to be tearing down our little section of sugarcane over here and transforming it into a fully functional automated sugarcane farm right over there somewhere. I cleared out some space behind those trees over there already. So let's head over there and I'll show you exactly what I have in store. So this is the location that I've selected for our sugarcane farm and it won't be too huge. I think I'm gonna go with two modules and I'll explain all that as we build it here in a second. So you can see that our house is just right over there. We're just right on the other side and this had just a nice flattened area already. So I went back through, cut all the trees down real quick, got all the grass up and I think I've prepped the surface pretty well. So let's head up to the storage unit actually over here gather up a couple materials and stuff, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to craft some uh, items that we have yet to craft. We've got our friend here as well. He's been visiting quite often, to be honest with you guys. Ooh, those are good ones there. Slime balls and Nautilus shells. Oh yes, those are very highly sought after. I could definitely go for those. I wish we had some emeralds, but that's one of the major intentions of why I want to build this sugarcane farm in the first place. So sugarcane, we know, can be made into paper. Well, that paper can be used in a multitude of different uh, different things. So we need it for building uh, or making fireworks. So whenever we go to the end, inevitably, and get our elytra, and we're able to fly around and all that stuff, we're going to uh, we're going to need that in order to uh, to make fireworks to zip us around the map. Now, another thing we're going to need the paper for is we're going to need it for bookshelves because here real soon we are going to be making some bookshelves for our enchanting table set up so we can finally start using some of these levels. One of my biggest fears here recently is that those 55 levels I have accumulated down there will go away real quick if I die. If I happen to die for whatever reason at this point, I'll lose everything except for seven levels, and that's only if I actually manage to get all the experience that I drop when I do die. So. I do not want to waste the opportunity to start getting some enchanting done. So not to mention that you can use the paper to trade with some villagers for a huge surplus of emeralds, which is another thing that we're going to need. So let me finish up here gathering up a bunch of supplies. I'm going to bring them over there to the build site and I'll show you exactly what we're going to be start crafting up. Okay, so I've made it over here to the project area and I've planted some spruce trees that are now coming up springing to life over there because I know I'm going to be wanting to use some of that in the builds because man, I love spruce. But I brought our project chest over, crafting table and stuff and gotten a couple materials that we're going to need. So I have been forming up some of these and I'll go ahead and finish them with you guys now. So we're going to first off because we're going to be making two modules and each one is going to be eight blocks long. I'm going to need 16 observers. So observers are going to be made with redstone, cobble, and nether quartz. And there we go. There's the 16 of them that I need. Observers will observe the block in front of them. And whenever they detect any kind of change in that block, it will send a redstone signal out the back of the observer. So we're going to use that in our build here. Now we also are going to need some pistons. And just like the observers, we're going to need 16 of them. So I'll put one of those back. We'll form up our 16 pistons there. And we've got all those. And now I think we can go ahead and start forming up the base of this. Okay, so we're going to come over here and we're going to start with our minecart track in order to house our collection system. So in order to start this out, you'll find your end point wherever you want the minecart to stop. So we're going to have it one there. And we're going to pop these out a couple, place another powered, and let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and finally cap it off with a powered rail. So now we need to power these powered rails. In order to do that, we're going to dig one block below where the block that is sitting on the rail there. 
or the rail it is sitting on. And let's carve these out. And now we're going to take a redstone torch and place it under each one of these. And you'll see that it's going to illuminate. That's going to signal that that is a powered, powered rail now. So it actually has power. And in order to test this, we're going to go ahead and throw a couple blocks up at the end there. And let's go make a minecart. So with the minecart in hand, we can lay it on that powered rail there. And you see that's going to go along and... It's going to perpetually go on there forever now, which is exactly what we wanted. So we'll go ahead and break that for now, though, because I do not want to hear that thing sliding around. And we'll go ahead and fill in these gaps real quick. And we'll start on the next part. All right, now we can go ahead and place our blocks on top of the train tracks here. So we'll go ahead and put blocks. If you just click right directly onto the track, it will place them right above it there. And we'll go ahead and put a block here so we can hop up there. There we go. We'll take that down and now we're going to put some stairs. So we're going to use these to waterlog some water here. So we're gonna put these along this edge and now we can take water and waterlog each one of these and that way we can have a surface in order to plant our sugar cane next to. All right, so now we've got all of our stair blocks all waterlogged in there. It all looks great. And don't fret that that's kind of like slouch down in the corner there it's just a visual bug and it does not mean that the water is like flowing so you can still plant sugarcane on these blocks which is exactly what we're going to do now we can go ahead and put blocks on top of these stair blocks here just to cover them up and on top of these let me go ahead and fix this real quick perfect there we go um, i actually want to strip these yeah yeah i like that let's strip those perfect so on top of the uh, block that you've chosen here, now we're going to actually go ahead and put our piston. So just face towards whatever way you want the piston to be moving out towards, you want to face opposite of that. So if we want the pistons to go towards this direction, then we're going to need to face this opposite direction. All right, with all your pistons placed up there at the top, now we're going to go ahead and come around to the back again here and... I'm going to hop up here, and we're going to place a solid block of your choosing along the back side of the piston here. And as soon as we get done with that, we'll place a row of redstone dust on top of that row. And then contrary to the, uh, the pistons, where you have to face like the opposite direction of which you want the piston to travel, on this one, we want the oops, we want the observer to be observing this direction where the sugarcane is growing. So we're actually going to place the observer facing that way. That is the little tail end or the butt of the observer there. So you'll see that the redstone dust is connected to each one of these, which is exactly what we want. So we'll continue that along there. And now we can go ahead and test this real quick. If we make the sugar crank go up to three, perfect. You'll see that it activates all the pistons simultaneously at the same time and knocks the, the reeds down, the sugar cane down. So that is exactly what we want. Now we can go ahead and sleep real quick first before I get overrun. There we go. But now we need to have a area where it's actually contained because if you didn't notice, whenever it hit that sugar cane, it'll throw them far, guys. It'll, it'll chunk them real far out there. So... What our goal is, is to contain them inside of this small area here. Because if we take a minecart and we make a new item called a hopper. So for a hopper, you'll just get a chest and then a few pieces of iron there. And that will make you a hopper. Now you can actually take that hopper and place it in with a minecart and make a minecart with a hopper. So what this is going to do is if we come back over here, place a couple solid of blocks to contain the cart. We'll set the cart on its path there. It's going to continue to travel back and forth. But you'll notice whenever there's an item that is on a block above the minecart with a hopper, it will actually pick up all of those items in there and store them away inside of it. And we are going to use that as our collection system. So now we can actually place a hopper underneath one of these rails here and every time that the minecart passes over the top of it it will deposit a small amount of sugar cane into the hopper and then we can have that hopper in turn feed into a chest or another system of whatever we want in order to move items whatever you choose 
But for this build, of course, we're still early, and I'm trying to do simplified projects for you guys. So we're going to make this nice and easy. Now, <laughs> I don't want to hear this thing go any more than I have to for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and break it again. And let's go ahead and build up the area where this is going to be contained in. Before we start our project, I went ahead and started some glass uh, smelting up there. So I'm going to go ahead and run up there, get our glass, and make a glass front to this and kind of contain the area a little bit. There we go, much better. So I went ahead and put the front facing glass on the entirety of this thing. And you'll see I made some additions over here as well. So originally my plan was to put two of these modules. That's kind of what I'm calling these things here is these modules. So I was going to put one here and then another one just to mirror it, which is what this is symbolizing here. However, I thought, you know, what if we introduce a different idea? Because the way that the... Um, the collection system down here is going to work is that, like I said, we would have a hopper leading into a chest somewhere along this rail line here, and it would drop off its goods and continue to cycle back and forth. But then I thought, what if I just have a continuous track that goes around and we'll have one singular minecart that goes and travels the entirety of this thing, and while it goes, it will collect a third module here. So this is kind of what this is symbolizing, is that this is where a longer, uh, more elongated third module will go as well. It will follow the exact same premise as this right here. The only difference is that we'll need to make sure and adequately space our powered rails um, Probably every two to three rails along here, I guess, you know, just to make sure it has adequate speed to keep up with momentum back and forth and so it doesn't kind of stall out or anything like that. And as far as a collection area, I was thinking instead of one singular uh, chest that it could be depositing into, we could do two. So we could have maybe a minecart uh, hopper, or excuse me, the minecart hopper would pass over another hopper here deposit some goods into a chest here, and then we can maybe have another one here. Heck, we can even have a third one somewhere in the middle of a one or two. It definitely leaves uh, the door open for a lot more modifications or options for us in the future there. So now that I've got that front facing glass on there and I've kind of nailed down a little bit better design, I think my next step is I'm going to go ahead and do the original plan and mirror this one here over to this other side, and then we can start working on the back half over there. Well, I'm just placing my glass now. I've got the entire thing all done. And when you get into the habit of making these things or in, you know, the, uh, the, the groove there, you can really bust these things out quick. It didn't take me any time at all when I wasn't <laughs> trying to fully explain it to you guys. Man, it was, a, it was about a quick five-minute little thing here. So, but anyway, we've got that one in there, and it is exactly mirrored over. I've checked it. It is functional. Everything works just fine. So now that we've got those two in there, I am going to go ahead and make an elongated third one. And you'll see that I also already put in all the rails there, and I went ahead and tested that too. All you'll need is adequate enough speed to keep it going at a good momentum so it doesn't get stalled out. And once it gets to the end over there, all we got to do is just have another powered rail and it keeps it going forever. So that is going to work out just fine. So let's go ahead and get cracking on this longer third one over here. And like I said, it is going to be the exact same thing that we just did on both sides here. But it's just going to be a little bit longer. Now a bit of a warning, if you're doing anything similar to what I'm trying to do now, or you're using sand blocks in place of dirt blocks, you're going to run into an issue like I just did. This one was an end cap block before, and when I put this one in here, it changed the orientation of this block, so there was like a small gap here, and basically it did this and washed everything away. So be very careful with that, guys. I'm going to run into the same thing over here whenever I go to this one. Let's see if I can. Uh, let's see if I can do. Uh, make it happen again. Let's see if I can put this block in there first. We'll put that there. Let's see if I can make it happen here to show you exactly what I mean, guys. So, yes. Yeah, so, you'll see that whenever I change the orientation of that block there, it's no longer a corner block. Now, it wants to put this one as a flat block, and this one is facing this direction instead. So, needless to say, you're going to have to do a bit of finagle in there in order to make sure the orientation of your steps are right. If you're even using steps in the first place, you might be using half slabs, um, which is another option. But just be warned. Um, 
your rails won't be destroyed as you can see i'm going to pick them up and everything you're just going to have to go out and play fetch with them for a second so <laughs> but i'm going to get back to work here let me finish up uh let me finish up this backside real quick and i'll get back with you guys it's like every single episode you guys every every episode why are they why are they always here like why why just go away what happened? Why? I mean, there's like 40 of you. What is happening? Oh, God. Kill the Bannerman so I don't get bad omen. Kill him for me. Do it. Do it. Shoot him. Shoot your brethren. <laughs> yes. That's just what I want. Fools. Well, I've got everything placed exactly where I want, and now I am just going through and placing the last few pieces of glass. So... I, uh, I definitely want to show you guys a couple of modifications that I had to, uh, to make whenever I was building this back portion. So, redstone will only travel whenever these get a signal. So, let's say this dispenser here, this observer, excuse me. Whenever it gets a signal, it'll shoot out the back and it will travel up to 15 blocks before it will run out of juice. Once it uh, once it hits that sixteenth block, it won't uh, won't operate. So the problem I was running into is that this is much more than fifteen. So if that one were to fire, it would go along here, travel up to about fifteen, and then stop. So what I had to do is put in the redstone repeaters that we made earlier. So I don't have them set to any ticks. I have them set to the fastest mode. And what's going to happen is that any of these that fire on this side are going to go ahead and trigger these redstone repeaters. You'll notice that both of them are facing this direction, so the current's going to continue along here. So whenever you have a redstone repeater, I technically really don't necessarily need both of these. I could just do this one here, but just to make it aesthetically pleasing, I did them both. But beside the point there, I, uh, I went ahead, put those on there, and now... This one will boost this an additional 15 slots, which is enough to get all the way up to here. Now, this one is facing this direction, so it will not continue all the way around and wrap around to the other side. And the reason being is that I don't want the entire system to be dependent on just one side. So, what's going to happen is that if this side fires, it's going to go ahead and send the signal this way around to this back side. And if that side fires, it'll fire sending the signal this way. So one small third of the, uh, the entirety of the mechanism there won't fire every single time, but the collection cart will be going down, and any time these are firing on the sides, it'll go ahead and activate the middle to fire as well. So it won't be the absolute maximum efficiency that you could possibly make in, uh, in regards to this, but it will be completely lossless. So that's good. Um, at this point, I want to go ahead and start to decorate this thing a little bit, though. I went ahead and put in these spruce uh, logs here, these spruce pillars, just to kind of give it some stability and to kind of flesh out where I want the base to be. And I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the walls, and then we can go ahead and throw a roof on this thing. And for a final touch, I want to give this little interior area just a little bit of touch of decorating. So I went ahead and installed the collection system now before I start decorating. I was going to do it as we did the interior portion here. However, I figured since we're working on this, I might as well reap the rewards of everything we've done so far and, uh, and put in that collection system. So I went ahead and put a chest down here and then attached a hopper up there. Putting a half slab over the top will allow me access to the chest as well. And you'll see that the hopper actually has a few sugar cane that it's gotten in there already. And every time it passes by, it will deposit another, another sugar cane inside of there. So it'll nice and slowly just put all the sugar cane in there for us. And I actually had to move the powered rails from the center here off to the side. You see, the problem I was running into is that because I had the rails here and the area that I was putting the hopper was nearby the redstone torch it was actually locking the hopper if the hopper is receiving power then it will go into a locked position meaning that it cannot receive any of the, uh, the items that are trying to be deposited from the mine cart there so i went ahead positioned those over just a little bit there it still gives it plenty of force to get around the entire track here and like i said it's go ahead and stockpiling our sugar cane for us
Now, one final little trick I wanted to show you guys as well, that minecart could get awfully annoying. So if you want to prevent that, you can actually go into your sound options, swipe your master volume to zero, get back out, turn it back up to wherever you had it before, and now magically the minecart will not be making any more noise for you. Now with the decorating, I want to start with the walls and I kind of have an idea in my head. I want to do some almost like fortified structure stone walls with some nice archways here. So I'm thinking like uh, this is, I believe, 12 blocks along here and then 13 if we include that front fascia there. So I'm thinking that if we do a two arch here and then possibly either two large arches or one large very large arch around the back back here that'll that'll look pretty good and then we can go ahead and just make a nice simplified roof and i don't want to do a very peaky roof on this one i just want to do a very subtle kind of rolling roof on the top of this one so let me uh let me build up one of these wall sections here and let's try to show you guys exactly what i'm thinking here we go last little bit perfect all right that's exactly what i had in mind so each side i'll have these two arches on it here on either side there and i think i'll do a very similar pattern in the back whether it's two or three or even one large arch i'm not too sure yet i've kind of kind of terraform this just a little bit and <laughs> ensure this water doesn't traipse down the hill all towards our train tracks down there but i'll get that all terraformed and cleaned up now you might be asking why i spaced it out a block i left myself a block back here because i kind of want to put a backer to the back of this so kind of like some filler so you'll see if i start to fill this in a little bit here well if i can place the blocks correctly Let's see, real quick rough draft here. Yeah, so that'll be like our filler background right there. So, and I'll put another kind of little pattern somewhere in there. But another reason why is because I didn't want this to be butted up right up against this. Because if you start to put blocks above and around uh, these redstone dust here, it kind of starts to mess with uh, the signals a little bit, depending on where you put them and stuff like that. So I didn't want to interfere with the signals at all. So this will give me that little bit of a buffer area for me to go ahead and start building my roof up a little bit over the top. Well, I've got both sides all mirrored up and they look, uh, look identical. I think everything is looking really good. I went ahead and added in some fencing in the sides just to kind of give it some uh, like barn-esque windows um i think i'm going to go ahead and backlight those as well and i think the light shining through on those is going to give it a nice pleasant aesthetic whenever we're done guys uh, but around back here i uh i have a two block center instead of one block center so the uh i think i'm going to go ahead and do two arches two large arches here in uh, in the back so every side will have two arches however the back side will have two larger arches and, uh, and then again, I think I'll just do the exact same concept here. No need to, uh, to tear too far from the path here because I think that the symmetry is working out pretty well with this one. And I think I'm just going to keep it going. So let me, uh, let me finish up with this backside, guys, and then I'll, uh, we'll move on to the next step. Well, I think it turned out really good, guys. I did the double arch, like I said. Got the two block in the center there. And speaking of two block, anybody with a real keen eye might have noticed that I completely goofed earlier. This was a single block center, but it was off centered. And because of the expansion in the wall that I did there, it ended up being completely goofed up. So it looked absolutely terrible. But I went back through, caught my mistake, and I've made all the changes. So I've got the three sides all complete. And they're all basically mirrored, pretty much identical to one another. Like I said, the back side is just a little bit larger. And on the front side here, I went ahead and started some ideas of what I want to do to kind of wrap up this small little chunk that's like kind of end cap on each side. And I think this idea right here, just a really small little arch to kind of mirror what we've got on the other sides. Um, I don't know. I might change it up just a smidge. I might have to go up like one block higher because I think... Yeah, I think the sides here are one block higher, so I might need to come up just a smidge more to kind of accommodate that. But, uh, but yeah, and then I started to place in some, uh, some rigidity here underneath the, uh, the sugar cane, kind of put in some, uh, some smooth stone blocks to give it some character a little bit. I think what I want to do is I want to 
have this kind of rise up. Um, we'll use these as an example here. Um, just like this though, and we'll have this, uh, this is our floor level here basically. And, uh, and then, I don't know, I think I'm going to do some kind of adjustment with this. What I really wanna do is maybe have these transported outside of this area, as a matter of fact, and we won't even have this as a collection area. We'll, uh, we'll just have this as a nice little kind of like viewing area of the mechanism going on. And then we'll transport the goods somewhere else. And I'm thinking maybe like a storage silo or a, something like this, because we've got a really wide area out here of grass that is going to be a good potential to kind of utilize as we uh, as we grow this area. This could be like our industrial area where we kind of make more of our farms and our redstone contraptions and such. And then towards that area over there, we can have that as more of our agricultural area. Um, we've got, uh, got our storage building over there already, and our house is kind of sitting on the hill atop everything. So I think this is good. This is kind of laying out the plans of how we're going to set up our community, our entire little town that we're going to inevitably uh, end up growing out here. So, Because I want to do some villager-related uh, things here fairly soon, too. Like I said, we are growing this for the uh, the sugar cane so we can use as traders and of course we're going to need some traders to trade with so we'll be getting into the villager aspect of this very very soon guys but enough rambling on let me finish up this end cap here like i said i'm going to design something very similar to this here kind of continue that same kind of look that we've got going let's finish up decorating that and then i want to start on a roof design well, just like with everything else with this project, I've had to redesign the front slightly, but I ended up coming up with this design just a little bit different than what I showed you guys earlier. So because of the additional slots that I made or the additional blocks that I placed in, uh, in the sides here, I went ahead and expanded out the front an additional one block as well, just to give it that extra fortified look and to keep everything nice and symmetrical. I moved our spruce log one block over to the uh, to the right or to the left, uh, respectively there, and went ahead and I'll use those as part of the roof support. And then in here, I went ahead and lit everything up with some nice lanterns, like I said earlier, just to give us some backlighting to make sure that no mobs spawn back there. And not to mention the fact that it's going to give it that nice little kind of workshop look like, you know, things are going on inside of there. We've got sugar cane going on in there. So I think it's looking really good, guys. But at this point, I think it's time to go ahead and start uh, working on the roof. So I'm going to go ahead and gather up a bunch of half slabs because i think that half slabs are going to be our best ticket to not only prevent mobs from spawning but also give us that nice rolling slope uh, roof look that i'm going for so let me go over here and make a bunch of various uh half slab types now i'm coming to the back and i'm starting off here because i kind of want to make one strip down the center of the building uh as stone not only give it a little bit of contrast but again since the building looks so fortified i think again that will give it that uh that fortified look here so i'm just going to continue to stagger these up and see if i can just get like a nice kind of stair stepped look up here and we'll put this as just a half slab taller than the rest of the roof to give it a little bit of differentiation there. I think it's gonna make it look really nice. And while I'm here, I'm also going to be putting some wooden spruce half slabs above the uh, the area where the sugar cane are actually growing. Now, even though the sugar cane are getting pushed by the piston against the glass wall and then dropping down, on rare occasions, you'll actually get it to throw it so hard that it'll either bounce up on top of the glass here or right back up on top of the uh, the observer itself. So if we place some half slabs on top of this, that is going to prevent any of that happening. And this is the final step to making this farm 100% lossless. So I'm taking a step back now and I'm kind of checking on how I feel about this roof design, where I want that strip to be. Is it tall enough, everything like that? Because like I said, the roof is going to come off of this side here and slope up and go ahead and meet that, uh, that center subsection there on both sides. And then that will be the center structure that will be nice and fortified there. And I plan to go ahead and put some stone that will kind of arch up here to connect to that as well to give it again more of a fortified look. There we go, something similar to that. 
just to where it connects to those uh, those oak logs just to make sure it looks like nice and rigid so now I'm gonna go ahead get up to the top and let's start placing about a billion oak slabs or excuse me spruce slabs and uh, we'll get up here and we'll start making this roof a uh, little bit more connected because it's looking a little bit patchy right now but the roof design all I'm gonna do is just keep stair stepping everything up just one little bit at a time guys so we'll uh, we'll be putting each one of these just a half slab taller than the last one before it and just kind of working our way up until we slowly meet that thing right there because we want this one to be a nice gradual slope and we want it to, to end up being just about here. So we want it to be right below where that center strip is just so it looks like that that center strip is a more prominent uh, supporting feature of this whole thing. Well, I've got side one all done over here, and this is what I come up with. Like I said, gentle stair steps. I made a little bit of an indention here where we had our two arches, and everything is just nice and gradual. The one thing I kept in mind the entire time is whatever I did to one side, I would do to the other side. Of course, there's the exception where this slopes up on its own and then comes to a very dramatic stop here at the front fascia of the building. But with that in mind, just like I said, keep it gradual. We're going to do the exact same thing over here. You'll see it looks very patchworky as it is now, but I'm just continuing to mirror everything. The nice thing with symmetry is that if you keep it consistent, then the build will be nice and easy with you guys. Oh, yes. Give us all that sugar cane down there. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll finish up with this side over here, guys. And we've got a little bit of spacing. Let's see if I can do this without falling. In between here, it looks like. And we can actually come back through here and add in a little bit of lighting decorations. And what I have in mind is maybe adding a couple glowstone blocks here and then kind of covering those up. Um, similar to what we did inside of the house build over there with like the quote-unquote little chandelier the drop-down lighting fixture that we did uh, we'll just cover them up with like some birds half slabs maybe or something like that and we'll get the illumination that we're seeking and it'll still blend in really really nicely so let's finish up this one half of the uh, the roof over here guys that way we can start working on the interior and the final touches of this thing and with that, the roof is finally complete. So I am definitely excited with the way this came out, guys. I think it turned out really, really nicely. Even on the inside here, it has a really nice design. You can still see that prominent stone feature there. And I, I just like it. It gives it a little bit of character. And I went ahead and reduced the, uh, the logs on the, each side here down by one and replace it with some stone. I thought it was a little bit more fitting that the archway kind of blended in with the stone features there on each side. So I like how it's kind of, uh, kind of flows now, but um, a lot of you guys probably noticed that this little tool over here we haven't introduced quite yet. So if, you, uh, if you've made yourself a stone cutter, the stone cutter's nice because normally with, let's say, uh, these granite stairs here, you're gonna get for the granite, it's going to take you six pieces of granite to make four granite stairs. Well, with a stone cutter, you actually get a one-to-one -one ratio for every one granite that you spend. You can actually get any one of these pieces of, uh, of granite here. So we're going to line the inside of the interior in here with some granite. I think it's going to be a really nice subtle accent that's going to go with the browns and it's going to contrast well against this uh, kind of brighter gray that the, uh, the smooth stone has in it. So let's craft up some granite features here. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Nice and simple. So I used the polished granite variant and it's it's clean i like this a lot it gives it these nice clean hard lines around each one of the tiles just makes it look really really like it's a professional masonry job and i think that that is absolutely wonderful the final thing to do here guys is to go ahead and get some lighting now you're probably wondering where the heck did the collection thing go I went around back over here and I made a very simple uh, collection entrance down here. Whoop. And you can get in here and get into the chest. Now this is not going to be long term by any means, but just like I said earlier, I kind of have it envisioned now that this is going to path underground somewhere over here to a larger, more centralized storage silo of sorts. And I think that that's a really good idea, guys. So for now, we're just going to make a nice, simple, subtle back entrance here that we can go ahead, get in, 
grab our sugar cane when we need to and get out of there. It's going to be completely hidden away from all the other uh, you know, baddies that are going to be swarming by. You know how these pillagers are. They might come by and try and scoop up some of our sugar cane, and we just can't have that. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and light this thing up, though, guys. Get a little bit more of these final decorations, and we're going to be done for the day. I think this looks absolutely great, and not to mention... It's effective. I'm going to put a couple glowstones in the corners up here, too, and I'm just hiding them away with some slabs there. And that way, the light is still shining down into the area where the, uh, the sugar cane is located. And we should be able to, yeah, we should be able to just see just a glimmer of it there, which isn't a problem at all, guys. I don't mind that whatsoever. And it'll illuminate that area there. And I went ahead and threw some lanterns in there. I think if, aside from that, I think I'm going to go around the outside here and lay some torches. I always like the aesthetic of the torches on the outside of the buildings. It looks a little bit more rugged, a little bit more natural, you know, where you would figure the, uh, the townspeople would probably use their torch on the outside of the building where the smoke, you know, would obviously go and, uh, and permeate outside rather than inside the buildings, but uh, I don't know. It's just it's all personal personal taste here, but I think that's gonna call it right there, guys. I think that this build is all the way 100% completed. We now have a 100% completely lossless sugarcane farm here that I think turned out really really good. Like I said. It's uh, it's going to be really nice to have this much sugarcane coming up because the next step is definitely going to be able to obtain some leather for some books. And then once we have our books, we can convert those into bookshelves and then onto the enchanting process. And I cannot wait, guys. We definitely need to get this gear enchanted so we can start on to going to the end and if you're not familiar with the end it is one heck of a challenge so we definitely need to come prepared but i will let all of you get out of here for the day and i really appreciate y'all stopping back by as always thank you so much if you like what you've seen please drop me a like and subscribe share with all your friends and i'll see you in the next one bye for now